Hi, it's Katie Jarvis with Managing the Mess. I'm an elementary art teacher at a K-6 school just outside of Washington, D.C. Today I'm filming outside in the courtyard just outside of my art room because it is way too nice to be inside. And you know what that means. Summer is soon approaching, which is super exciting. But as art teachers, you know, there are a million things that are on your to-do list before the school year ends. So this video is going to be some organization to help you get track of what things need to be done before this school year ends and also some things that you can do to help set you up for success in the coming school year. The first thing you're going to want to do is have some conversations with your colleagues and your administrators about what is expected of the art teacher in the fourth quarter. So are there going to be disruptions to your schedule because of testing or parties or special events? What is expected of you as far as packing up the art room? Do you have to put everything away or are you able to keep up bulletin boards and other things inside of your room? When you do pack, where do those things go? Do they go into a storage closet? Do they need to be off of the floor. This really varies from school to school. So you need to make sure that you know what is going to be expected of you and you can make time to do those things so you're not at school well after the last day packing up the art room. Be sure to note special dates on your calendar so you know when that award ceremony is. You know, of course, when the last day of school is, but you also know when grades are due. Make a list of all these things and so that you are organized and have an idea about what you're going to need to do. Now, the end of the year is a lot, so I typically set aside some time where I may purposely stay late just to clean and pack and organize a few strategic days. So that might be a strategy that works for you as well. If you select art awards at your school, you need to decide um, who this is going to be. So at my school, I like to focus in just on the sixth graders and I'm asked to give out two awards. Um, so I would get those names to the office so that they have that information ready for the award ceremony. It's my job as the art teacher to print out a certificate or I'd like to use something a little bit different and a little bit special uh, to stand out. So what I give out is the Golden Paintbrush Award. So I found a wonderful printable on Teachers Pay Teachers for the Golden Paintbrush Award, and I will be sure to link it down below. Now this fits in really well for me because my class incentive from week to week is that the class earns a golden paintbrush. So when all the students see this at our award ceremony, they all ooh and ah, and they know what this is when a sixth grader is taking home that golden paintbrush paintbrush. Um, I would get those certificates ready and often I will laminate them on my personal laminator just to elevate them a little bit. I don't like to do trophies or medals, which is what some of the other um, specials do at our school, but I like to give the students a personal sketchbook in either watercolors or a nice set of pencils to go along with it. I would take a chipboard paintbrush from Lowe's and spray paint this gold and make this look sparkly and then tie all those items up with a ribbon and present Present that when I give the award. Now you at your school might be required like I am to present the award. So you need to take a few minutes to think about what you're going to say. When I do mine, I do address the whole audience to kind of get their attention and pull them in and say to them, hello, my most amazing artist. Thank you, Cassie Stevens. And I have them reply, hello, my most amazing art teacher, just to get everybody's attention because I might be in the middle of this long assembly where even kindergartners um, are sitting on the ground and they're getting a little bit wiggly. I explain what the award is, that it's a student that has gone above and beyond in the art program. They don't ask me, is this good enough? But they ask themselves, is this my best? And I have um, the students also, when I'm explaining that I'm going to be giving out the golden paintbrush, I will hold it up and ask the students to give me a Ooh, and then the audience can also respond. So there's a little bit of an interactive element when I'm giving my um, speech, which I recommend to you as well. If you've already done these things in your class and your students will know how to respond, it just makes it fun for the audience to be a part of this too. 
So in the fourth quarter, you're going to want to meet with your administrators or bookkeeper to find out when are your orders due. Um, you'll want to find out if there is a budget. Do you get so much money? Is there a fee per student? How is that going to be decided? Um, it's a large process to create these art orders and get them organized. So it's something you're going to want to start on early to give yourself several weeks. This is not something you could do in a weekend. It really is something that takes a lot of time, especially if you are new. Now, I start off by doing my orders by taking inventory. So I count how many I have of each item. So this is something that students could help you with. Um, I have a video that details my inventorying process and my ordering process, and I'm going to link that in the description down below because that really goes through a very um, step by step all around my room, each little material that we order, and I think it's going to be helpful for you. Think also about when you're coming across your inventory, if you've got just a little bit left over of things, how could you use those supplies up in the last few weeks? Could you combine things like two colors of paint together so that you have less that you have to store and you could throw out some of those empty bottles? At this time, when I'm coming up with my art orders, I'm also thinking about what would I like to create for a wish list? So a wish list is a little note that I sent home to parents about things that we would love to be donated to our art program. And I would organize that um, now in the fourth quarter and I would get that approved by my administrator and I would get that copied so that when we come back in the new school year, we can send these home with students within those first few weeks. Maybe your school even does like a little packet or an envelope with all the important papers in it and you might be able to get your little wish list inside of there. I'd also promote if you're going to be needing certain items donated to post those things on social media. Heads up families, next year we're going to be needing donations of baby wipes and egg cartons for our budding artists. So parents can be thinking about this over the summer and when we start to do those back to school shopping, they have you in mind. In the fourth quarter, I will select my first project for the next school year. So I often create a collaborative mural with all the students in the entire school. So I pick a very simple material such as a tag board and I will choose a shape and I will copy and cut and prep this over the summer so that it is ready to go for the first day of school. Then all of my lessons would be the same for the first few weeks of school as each grade level completes their portion of the mural. So I'm gonna pop up on the screen some examples of things that I've done with this before. Um, I've had students use a little cell phone template and create selfies of themselves. Some of the upper grades even kind of extended on this where they create different apps on the phone to tell us a little bit more about them. At times I have color coded these portraits so it had that rainbow feel to it and I did it by table. So whatever table they sat at, those are the colors that they use so that I was sure to have the entire rainbow up for my selfie display. I've done soup cans. So I've taken a blank template that I created of Andy Warhol's soup cans and had students get creative and come up with their own kind of soup. So Pokemon soup, bubblegum soup, soccer soup, whatever those kids were into, they could create a soup out of it for our display. I've also done a Where's Waldo theme where we hid our principal and the giant crowd of everyone at the school. Students created a self-portrait of their head and then they chose from different patterns of a Waldo body so that they had clothes that were red and white striped to make it more difficult to find the principal. Then throughout the week, I would move the principal in our display so that students could come in each week and try to find theirs, but also try to find out where is the principal. I have had a lot of success with doing things that coordinated with my school's mascot. I was at a school that had a hawk as a mascot and we had students create kindness feathers the first few weeks of school. They either drew or wrote um, with crayon and then we water um, temper painted on top of that with those temper cakes. So super easy for the first few weeks, but got in a lot of bright colors 
for that fun display. And then this year we have a hornet as a mascot at my current school. So we created a hornet's nest where each student was given a little hexagon and they created a different bee according to what grade level they were in. So we had quite the variety and students were able to outline this with Sharpie and then color those in with the temper cakes. In the fourth quarter, you need to make sure that you set aside enough time to take down all the artwork in the hallways and get it returned to students before the very last day. I also like to take time to photograph student artwork to use as examples for the next school year. Speaking of examples, this is a perfect time to be going through your examples and seeing if you've got multiples of things, or if you're holding on to examples that you've done that you no longer need. You have a lot to do in the last few weeks of school. So what are you going to do with your students? This is a great time to do really high value, fun activities with low mess. You could um, organize something where you are creating back to school displays that you're going to use in the next school year. So you've got things up in the hallway right away. I like to utilize a ketchup and pickle day. So especially when I'm doing my grading, I let students have um, that entire class period to catch up on whatever work is not finished and then they get to pick and choose what they want to do. So I do this all within the same week. So I have an entire week where students are having this free time and I'm able to use all my planning time and the time when they're in my class to be grading and cleaning and organizing and doing things on my to-do list. Um, it's a great time of year to be doing collaborative projects such as murals. So you've got everybody working together on just one thing versus hundreds and hundreds of paintings and drawings and things that you have to deal with. I like to also do some simplified things in the last week or two of school where I'm doing the same thing with everybody or I'm doing the same thing with multiple grade levels just to simplify. Things I've done before are games. Um, I love to do like a bingo review game with art vocabulary um, and I'll do this with pictures and then have students cover things up. I know a lot of people like to do the Bob Ross bingo, so Google that if you've never heard of it. Um, I've done where you decorate and design um, an Oreo. So you open up the Oreo and then um, carve into the cream within the last few days. And that was super fun for students. Very little setup and cleanup for me. As you finish up with materials, start cleaning them up and packing them up. So I'm just about finished with clay. When my last class finishes, I'm gonna be cleaning those clay tools. I'm gonna be going through and seeing if there's things in there that I should throw away or recycle. This is something that my students won't notice, but I will notice next year when I go to do clay that all my items are cleaned up and ready to go. So take the time to do that now with materials you're no longer using. Right now, I'm also starting to pack a summer box. So this works really well to do in a clear container so you remember what's in there. Um, start putting in jobs that you might like to complete over the summer or materials and things that you might want to have access to. Now, this is not something that you have to do. This is definitely a personal choice. For me, I would rather on a rainy day, uh, sit and relax and watch Netflix on my couch and cut out turkeys. Uh, then, then cutting them out the night before in a panic uh, next school year before Thanksgiving. So that's just how I roll. Cuts down on my stress to just do it uh, a lot of bulk prepping over the summer of simple kind of mindless things that I can do while I'm watching TV. I'll also go around my room at this time of year and check on labeling. So are the things that need labels? Is this something I want to stop and do right then? in the fourth quarter or is this something I want to record and make a list of so that I can get these printed out and ready to go over this summer so I come back in ready to label things. It's a really good time to go through your digital items as well and see if you like how those things are organized. I'd also go through my email and just delete anything that you do not need so you've got just what you might need to access if you um, are coming back to school next year. 
brainstorm how you can get your students involved. Even if you just do your upper grades and have them do one little small job, um, each student as the class begins one week before they do their artwork, that is a lot of manpower to get things done. So brainstorm a list of what you would like students to do. It's really limitless, just whatever you are comfortable with them helping out with. A great one is to give students baby wipes and have them wipe off the fronts of cabinets or other areas that you feel like the custodians might miss or might appreciate having some help uh, scrubbing and cleaning with. Um, I've had students clean containers for me, sharpen pencils, test markers, sort and return artwork, and even take artwork displays down. At this time of year, I'll be taking pictures and videos of my room to help me to easily set it back up next year. If you are coming into a new art space or if you're someone that's required to take everything down, one thing I recommend doing is taking a picture of the blank walls in your classroom. Over this summer, you can do some digital editing and you can set up your room and imagine what is going to go where. While you have your camera out um, on your phone, you're gonna go ahead and take Take pictures of your technology because that's one of the most difficult things to set up. So take pictures of what gets hooked in where so it's really easy for you next year to get that set up and going right away. Take videos of yourself explaining, hey, this cord goes to the printer and it's plugged in here so that you will remember and just play that back and set up your technology quickly the next school year. I'm working on a video all about packing up your art room, so be on the lookout for that coming soon. If you've got any questions or comments, videos you'd like to see, make sure you comment down below, and I'll see you in my next video.